All right, uh, we're on the draw, and I uh, accepted this hand here. No problem. Ooh, just in time. Play the swamp, not let them know we're playing black white. Venture. And start getting in there with the white. Green blue. Hmm. Interesting. Uh yeah, swing three. Taps it down. Sure. Solid one. I feel like if you roll a one, there should be a, a downside for everything. I mean, like... <laughs> the Stygia gets tapped instead. Imagine that. I mean, obviously, the, it's just... It's not fun when that happens, and people would probably really hate that, but it's way more flavorful for D&D. Uh, &D. Not that I would know I don't play D&D, &D, but to me... I think that'd be fun. So what am I supposed to do here? I mean, plate armor's good, right? But... Yeah, just playing the Dungeoneer is fine. Precipitous drop's good. Can kill this, uh... Scion. Or Skyon. I don't know how to say that, so I apologize if that bothers you, but... I can't read. As you know from watching my Meteor Storm... Uh, series. I say meteor storm over and over again rather than meteor swarm. Okay, so his attack here, he's stuck on three and I have four. I have five. Yeah, so he's stuck on three. Uh, I think the play here is precipitous drop the two one swing for three. No. Well, you could swing three and the white. Precipitous drop, hired hex plate is also fine. Plate armor is also good. Zombie ogre is probably good too. So, Dungeoneer white is probably the play, but then he just blocks with the 2 1, and I hate that. So, this is the play I do. Uh, treasure token's fine, but I think it might have been better to make a. Oh, right, I, I draw a card. And he can double block here to kill my 3-4, which is fine. I'm okay with that because he's stuck on three lands. I want to get damage in. And him blocking the 3-2 with the 2-3, that's fine too. Because then I get a 2-2. Two, two. So I could play plate armor here, but I want to draw the card. It would treasure. Puts another two damage on the board. Yeah, it really sucks when uh, you can't play the game because your mana screwed. Now he's kind of really far behind at this point because he missed his big play. So again, instant speed removal played on their turn. I mean, he really could have blew me out, you know, like oh, I'm gonna swing in and get him so I'm, so I make this play right I swing he trades with the 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 white blocks the three three you know what I mean it, it's just an opportunity for a two for one and now he just doesn't have that opportunity he takes six here and just is sad I don't understand why people do that a lot of people are doing that. That's pretty good. Um, that's also pretty good. Killing the 4 1 seems really good. Can't plate armor though. Um, you could just swing with the Gloomstalker. He likely will block with the 2 3, and then you play Zombie Ogre. So my thought process right now is I really don't want a Grim Bounty a 4-1. I get super greedy, and Grim Bounty greediness is what causes me to lose my one game. Yeah, attacking here, he just should block with the 2-3, but he's afraid of tricks. Which, 
you know, maybe I have one, maybe I don't, but you gotta play around them. Okay. So that's fine. I, I trade it for... I don't know if that was right, honestly, but that's what I did. I just wanted to venture into the dungeon with my zombie ogre. Yeah, it feels wrong now, looking at it. Yeah, Grim Bounty, the 4-1, probably was still the play. But... Um, plate armor, the 2-2 two, two swing... Eh, yeah. Yeah, plate armor, the 2-2. Two, two. Swing with the 2-2 two, two as a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, I really don't want to do that again. So, I'm going to plate armor... Right, because I'm not losing to the 4 1. So I don't want to use premium removal on something that's not going to kill me. If the 4 1 is not attacking, the 4 1 is just staying back. He's just being an annoying little blocker. Which, okay. So be it. And here he's probably got some sort of. I don't know, bounce spell? Tap spell? Spoiler the hunt, sure. Um, yeah, I'm not going to block or uh, attack. Then I venture to, into the dungeon draw card and play my Gloomstalker, which will allow me to really get in there with uh, the plate armor next turn. There's no attack with a 4 4 you just trade the 4 4 4 4 1, and that's no good. That was a lot of 4s. 4 4 4 4 uh, 4 1. <laughs> Imagine you're not a native speaker of English. And you heard me say that. 44444. Four, 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 four. So yeah. We already got the uh the completion of the dungeon. We're good. I can't block. So they're trying to be green white venture, I guess. I'm not sure. And the deck has plenty of removal, so I guess it's solid, but they're just I don't know. Now why are you doing it? I, okay, I guess I think... Okay, now he's tapped out. Or he's down to one card. This guy is being annoying. Let's get in there. But... Both strength. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I feel like the Shepherd's most likely to allow him to win the game. The 2-3 is better. I mean, it doesn't matter. He's going to make a Goblin token that he can block with or chump with. So he buys himself a turn. Buys a Null Hunter. Again, doesn't matter. Uh, you can Nimbus Containment the 1-1, one, one, but why? In the end, you should just Nimbus Containment the 2-2. Two, two. He uh, chumps with the 1-1, one, one, and then Dungeoneer. Or not, just chump with the 1-1. One, one. You gotta play Gloomstalker. <laughs> it's got double strike at this point. Uh, yeah, there's no point to make him lose a life. Pretty much everything's lethal at this point. Yeah, play the Gloomstalker. He cannot attack anymore. He needs to chump. Uh, the Gloomstalker's lethal, the Devoted Paladin's lethal. Uh, and if I switch the plate armor to the Dungeoneer, that is lethal. So there's three creatures that are lethal here. I'm playing black-white. I'm likely to have removal as well. Okay, now it's no longer lethal. <laughs> but, I mean, he's got no cards in hand. So, it didn't matter. But, 
venturing into a dungeon to gain a life just didn't do anything. Chomping uh, and blocking seven damage does something. So 5-0 and oh right now, and this, I believe, is the game I lose. Nope, it's not this game. Pretty sure. I don't know. Yeah, it's not this game. <laughs> hey, hey! Remember how I said this uh, Dawnbreaker cleric is a real sleeper? And when that's relevant, it's super relevant. Destroy a target enchantment. Get out of here, Warlock class. You are not going to be... <laughs> I'm very happy, yes. Not going to be drawing cards. And maybe he was really re relying on that, you know what I mean? So it's kind of an awkward situation now. Where I, I want to play Evolving Wilds. And I don't. Because I want my fifth land. And here, I do it on my turn. Because it doesn't matter. I'm not going to have Fate's Reser Reversal, obviously, just to scry, so... I have a good enough target with Barrowin. Barrowin. To get back from my Fate's Reversal. A 2-3 stops my plans. Oh no. Yeah, let's just play the Barrowin. Scry. Yeah, that's fine. True, I do need to land. You're right. As I just did point to the five drop. I mean, I guess it's fine, but I don't know. Playing a playing a three four probably was a little better there than a three three. Yeah. Skullport merchant. Uh, that could be miscontainmented. It should be, but I get greedy here and play the Paladin, so I can swing for four. Uh, I mean, there's no reason not to swing with the 2-4 as well. Because there's a 0% chance that the Dawnbringer Cleric is uh, going to die, but there's a non-0% chance that he just takes the damage, or just says no blocks. You know what I mean? It's not 0% chance that he doesn't, or that he blocks. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You get what I'm trying to say, but I'm saying it in a double negative, so I keep screwing myself up. It's not 100% chance that he blocks. There. I don't know why that was so difficult for me to get through. Um, Owlbear... It's probably one of one in miscontainment here, but it's a mistake. I need to get rid of the Skullport, Skullport Merchant. Because that's the card that's actually going to lose me the game. 4-4 four, four is not. Um, yeah, you can double block to put that on there now. And then you can double block to put it on the Barrel in. Oh, he's going to do that. For sure, so get in the extra damage or don't attack with either. Exactly. And I don't really want to face reversal it back, so maybe I should have, maybe I shouldn't have. Not sure. <sighs> but trading vampire spawn for Barrowin, not the greatest, but. Hate reversing the Devoted Paladin seems better to me. I get another good attack, you know, with the 4 damage. And then the 4-4 four four seems to be big enough that he can't deal with it. Okay, so now you can swing both. Because if he blocks, then the Skullport Merchant will be dead. But like, let's say I had used the Nimbus Containment on the Merchant, so the Owlbear. 
He has a 2-3 and a 4-4. Four, four. Blocks Owlbear with my 4-4. Four, four. Blocks my 4-4 four, four with the Owlbear. And then I Bates Reversal it back. Play it. So, the Vampire Spawn isn't going to do anything. Looks like he's going to block here and sack. Because it's not doing anything. He's realizing this. I mean, it is preventing the the Barrowin from or Barrowin from attacking because the possibility of double blocking the Skullport. So I guess that's something. Yeah, I just want a Goblin here, and then I want a plus one plus one counter. You a five three. That's pretty good. That makes a plus one plus one counter not so great. I don't know what he's thinking about here. It takes a long time to get there though. He's gotta venture into the dungeon two more times to complete it. And then the uh, clan under <laughs> will be active. Not that it gets really much anything, though. What am I supposed to do here? Swing for four, and then Fates Reversal went back. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Blocks with the 5-3. And then I swing with everything. Vigilance, plus one, plus one. Okay, yeah, that's a good play. Alternatively, I can draw a land and plate armor equip on the something. Now it's different. How is it different? <sighs> yeah, it's different for sure. So now I... Mm, no, I precipitous drop the 4-1. And still swing 4. Plus 1, plus 1 counter on the 3-5? No. On... I guess I really think the other play is the precipitous drop on the 4-1 for sure I think that's for sure I mean obviously he's going to sack it and respond so I don't get to venture but and in the end and that's why Skull, per Skull Port I cannot talk it is 10.30 at night so Again, the miscontainment. You know, the Owlbear would have been dealt with by now. Bates Reversal would have been played. So I'd be an adventure one ahead. I'd be drawing a card here. Yeah, it just wasn't wasn't right. So get in there with a devoted paladin. I think you do show your hand and play the plates armor here. You don't want to show your hand that you're getting back to vote at Paladin. It only costs two mana. So I don't agree with this playing plan. Yeah, what do you put the plus one plus one counter on? That that card is already going to be killed, so I put it on the three four. Flashing blue, so he's definitely going to be playing. Um, oh, that one that makes the squirrel that you can pay X to give plus X or make a creature XX. Does that change anything? Sort of. Yes. Because now we can just kill anything at will with Hunter's Mark. Ancient lore is good, but plate armor on the one one's great too. And then swinging with one one. I mean, it's not ideal, honestly, but it's big enough to do the work it needs to do. 
So he's got to trade with the one two eventually, or deal with the four four. So I would block here, and then hope to play something that's bigger than a four four. Then again, he knows I have devoted Paladin in my hand, so he's anticipating the swing. So he's keeping the uh, bass back to block the arrow in. I mean, you can take four here, I suppose. Spoils of the hunt as well. That's pretty good, indeed. Like I said, Hunter's Mark, basically. And that's also why I done the 3-4, you know what I mean? So... Uh, yeah, okay. Alright, that's a good card. Uh, put it on the one three. No, you can put it on three four at this point. Well, they can't. Yeah, put it on the one three. I mean, yeah, you could put it on three four, but look at all that mana, and look at all the cards in his hand. So just keep swinging four. He's technically on a three turn clock because. I'm pretty sure we can finish the dungeon, yep. So, keep in mind that we can Fates Reversal to finish a dungeon and then Barrow in to deal damage. And that's relevant for sure. I'm calculating that right now. I'm thinking, okay, I just need to get an 8 damage. Let's swing all here. Because he doesn't know. So he's got to chomp the 5-7 with the 2-2 two, two, and then block the 3-2 with the 1-4, draw a card, play whatever trick. That's that's the play here. Um, I likely should have... No. We... I mean, I guess I could have changed the Dawnbringer to something else to the the priest here, but it's fine. I don't like. Why is that the block? Why would you think that? You must be confusing Ward with Menace or something. I'm not sure, or he just has a removal spell. It's the only reason why it would go that way. Okay. Yep. So he had powered kill. Had the removal. Like I said, but I mean I guess it is bigger, it's just the uh The plate armor is causing that to be... Okay, that makes sense, his blocks. So he's thinking, oh, I'm going to kill the 5-7. But then he's like, oh, but then this plate armor goes on to the bigger creature. Suddenly it's not so great. Okay. I mean, that dies to a... Reaper's Talisman, okay. Yeah, I like that on the uh, Dawnbringer Cleric. Really? Swing all? Okay. That makes sense now. So now the Priest of Ancient Lore is Death Touch. So... Eh, I don't know about that. I feel like... I like this was unnecessary. I'm not sure. 
There's chumping, four, five, six. I don't know, I feel like you could... He's just drawing so many cards. If only that merchant was gone. Yeah. Another deathly dispute. Look at that, he's just cycling through his deck. Still taking eight here, right? Oh, that's blocked. It's taking six. Sacking the treasure to draw another card. Jeez. You just gave me the good game. What are you looking at so hard? The graveyard just end turn. <laughs> so, all I have to do right now is swing with the Reaper's Talisman. Five mana. What you got? Uh huh. It's pretty good. That would stop a lot. I have to swing in with Dawnbreaker Cleric. Again, it does not matter now. So he's almost tapped out. So I'm thinking now, just attack with the priest. Gain two life. Put him at one. He still blocks. As he should. But... He, I think he incorrectly here. Well, I mean, I guess he's at one, so the next turn the Reaper is going to kill him either way. So, yeah, give him back that, which will kill him now. We draw a card. You give me the good game. I say good game. And look, we drew another Dungeoneer. It's always nice to go into the Tomb of Annihilation for the kill. Tobar loses one life. Bang! That's a fun victory. Nice. And a rank up. Bonus. So. Uh, 6 and 0 oh here. Wait. Six and one. I don't remember losing. Where's the loss? I know I lost. It's obvious. It's right there. We'll find it. One sec.